My buddy Rick sent me a mystery package just before Christmas. Man, he wrapped this thing up well. Okay, here's a squirt bottle. Reminds me of the kind Musty One uses. Here's a pair of slip joint pliers. I'll have to research the markings. This feels like another pair of pliers. Oak leaf. I think Resto Rob worked on an oak leaf brand tool recently. From Santa. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Another pair of slip joint pliers. An auto wrench, cool. Nice patina. These jeweler's screwdrivers will come in handy. Santa must know my whole family wears eyeglasses. All right, here we have a 50 cal BMG dummy round. BMG stands for Browning Machine Gun. Developed in the early 1900s, still in service today. My Instagram followers have seen a cleanup of a wrench just like this one. And here's the pair of croiters. Another 50 BMG. Man, Rick really hooked me up. This one says, open last. I wonder what Santa sent me. I'm going to wait to open this one in another video. I decided to brush the pliers off with a wire brush and soak it overnight in evaporust. Here's how the pliers looked after being rinsed off. I think the Evaporust did a great job. I went over the pliers with both the coarse and fine wire wheels. and I use my Dremel to wire wheel the tough to reach areas. So here's how the pliers looked after all the wire wheeling. I plan to make these my everyday wire cutters. So I decide not to go much further improving the finish. I used WD-40 to help loosen the pivot. I find exercising the liquid patina out of the pivot very satisfying. The pivot joint freed up nicely. I noticed that there was a gap in the jaws. I wanted to see if I could improve the fit. I tried a file, but the metal was too hard. I ended up using a stone from my Lansky knife sharpening kit. I think I made some improvement on the fit. This step was totally not necessary but I gotta keep that tube of flits off my back. 
I've been experimenting with Plasti Dip with some success. I've been using plastic wrap to get a better seal on the lid between uses. I push the plastic wrap down onto the surface of the dip to take up the air gap. The directions say to stir before using. I've been stirring between coats also. I hung the pliers from my old camera tripod. I like raising the Plasti Dip container up to the tool rather than lowering the tool into the dip. I bumped the side of the tool on the right, but it smoothed out as it cured. I gave it another coat after 30 minutes. These pliers started out pretty rusty. I think the evaporust and the wire wheel brought them back to usable condition. The Plasti dipped handles look and feel pretty good. We'll see how they hold up over time. Now let's see how I did sharpening the jaws. This is copper electrical wire. Let's try cutting at the top, middle, and bottom. So far so good. This is stainless steel leader material I use for making fishing lures. This is probably what I'll use the cutters for the most. The Croiders cut this material with no problem. This is some steel coat hanger wire. This is probably a little heavier than these little cutters were designed for. It took some extra squeeze, but it cut it. According to Alloy Artifacts, August Croider began manufacturing tools in 1878. The circular style marking, along with the Croider Industrial brand name, dates these pliers to after 1946. The model 3601 was specially designed with short jaws for pulling out or cutting cotter pins. This was a fun little project. These pliers will be my go-to wire cutters from now on. Thanks again to my friend Rick for the great box of stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.